Hello again everyone and welcome to another tutorial in my How to Draw Iconic Faces series. Before we start of course, if you could subscribe that would be fabulous, thank you very much. And also, remember, <coughs> ring that little bell icon. Ok, well the iconic face today is the great peace and civil rights activist assassinated in 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. Ok, now I'm going to start off um, with a kind of straight line coming up like that. And then a curve across the top. It's a gentle curve, like that. Okay, and then straight line down again to be that distance there. And then across this line here, we're going to have the eyes. Now, in this particular drawing, this particular face, the eyes are actually not in the centre of the head. But what you do is you take another straight line coming down here, like that. Another curve like the top, bring it in slightly, uh, like that. So you get that kind of lozenge shape and you'll find that the eyes are on the line which is just slightly above halfway. Okay, so let's do the eyes. Now Martin Luther King's eyes are actually quite far apart. Now uh, here's the shape of uh, this one. You start at this little corner and you go up at an angle like that and then curve over the top of the eye like that, see? And then the underside of the eye is a slight curve coming up, not as curved as that, coming up to meet the top line about there, okay? And you also have the line of the eyelid coming in there. And uh, the pupil of the eye comes in, there's the centre, in like that. Now, as I said, his eyes are fairly far apart, and usually you would find that the eye, distance between the eyes is the length of an eye. But in fact, if you take that there, mark it off, that would make the eye starts here. But it doesn't. It actually starts over here. Just a wee bit further on. See that? Quite wide. And he has quite gentle and kind eyes, I think, Martin Luther King. And uh, like this one, this line goes up, curves over the top. Like that. A lot of heavy shading there, eventually, <laughs> not at the moment. And the bottom curves back up like that. And then the pupil fills that space there. And above that you have the line of the other eyelid there. Okay? Now his eyebrows are actually fairly uh, far above the eyes, they don't start right down here, they start just about there, okay? And not from the corner, take a line up from the corner, come in a bit, and the eyebrows start about here. Fairly broad to begin with, and they're curving over the side of his forehead and kind of down like that. See that shape? Same with this one here. Um, this one is near to the corners, you come up here and the, the eyebrow starts about here. And it's a kind of gentle curve, fairly thick to begin with, and then getting narrow as it comes down there. Okay, bit of a highlight there to draw your circle on each one. Okay, and um, what we have then is the, the nose. Now, fairly broad, and you get a line coming down from the corner of the eyebrows towards the corner of the eyes, a bit of shading which we'll put in eventually. This is to delineate the shape of the nose, and following that kind of shape, you get a kind of triangular shape coming up in the middle, very lightly. And just getting the shape of the nose in here, okay? And then the front of the nose comes in just below that, as a kind of, almost like a diamond shape, but like a rounded diamond shape if you like. So you get a curve at the top here, and then the bottom part of the diamond shape coming in there for the bottom of his nose. And as you bring this line up here, you're flaring out into the wide nostrils on either side on a curve there. And of course the side of the nostrils come in beyond that. And if you took a line from there, they would actually coincide with the corner of the eye just about. Okay? So that's where you would put it. And it's a fairly short nose as well. Uh, again, this one is slightly over, so you would get the line coming down from about here. And that's where you would get the uh, line of the nostril. Okay, I'll be doing some pencil shading by the way, and I'll be using, well at the moment I'm using a 5B, and I'll be using that to do the, the dark shading, to get the form. Okay, now this 
before I go down to the mouth, oh, let's go back up to the top here. And just below that, you get the hairline, which follows this line all the way around. Again, you can just do a rough, sketchy line like that as you come down the side. And we'll use different lines when we start to kind of work on it. Okay, at this point, just in line with the eyes, you have the top of the ear coming in. The ears set fairly close to his his cheek, like that, that shape there. The other one comes in about here. Same kind of thing, you get the top of the ear coming in, then the curve of the bottom, like that. Okay, and then the famous moustache, which comes just below the, the nose there. It's fairly long upper lip, by the way. You know, you get that kind of distance down here, and you get a very, uh, well, you know, iconic, I suppose, you get that kind of Cupid's bow shape to his mouth. It comes out like that. Above that, you're going to get the, the moustache. So, again, just want the outline of it very lightly. Coming down over like that. And the corner of his mouth. At an angle. Comes down again, just beyond this line here. Okay, if you took a line up from the corner of the stash, it would probably hit his, the pupil of his eye there. See that? There. Okay, so let's do the, uh, the mouth now. As I said, there's a gap between the bottom of the moustache here and the cupid's bow. So there's a wee kind of bit of a muscle shape in there. Just below that, you have the start of the cupid's bow, which is that kind of curve there, which curves down. Like that quite distinctly, like that on a curve, and then kind of back up again into the bottom of the moustache. And you get a fairly broad shape coming in, curving up towards the cupid's bow, and then again the dip, quite a distinct dip coming in, coming down to join that there. Now his mouth, I'm going to mouth slightly open, and uh, the curve of the bottom of his lip comes down almost to a point there and then back up again to join this bit here. Then a very full bottom lip, come in like that, all the way up. Okay, so this is a, is building up to the nice shape now. Now below that we have the, the chin. There's a fairly square chin. I made it a bit broad there because it's his chin. The way he's just uh, sort of looking out just now, his chin actually is that kind of shape there and goes up towards the cheekbones there. And because it's quite kind of heavy set around the face, you get another piece of your face coming in here, around there, curving in under his collar there. And as the collar appears here, you get um, this tie coming below that, edge of his shirt and his jacket and his shoulder and the jacket coming down there and the other shoulder coming in about there. Okay, so I'm going to back up to the top again and start to work on the shading. Okay, I'm going to start with the, uh, the hair. I'm going to outline it a bit uh, more, definitely. And as I said, it was just a sketchy line to begin with, but if you don't hear, you know, you could um, just use your pencil like that in small lines to suggest the hair coming up like that. Do that all the way around, okay? And also the hairline coming around like that, all right? And I'll do that in a minute, but as we come down here, it's the same thing with the eyebrows. You know, try and follow the way the hair falls on the eyebrows when you're sketching with your pencil. So in this case, the hairs are going this way, so you just try and kind of, you know, use your pencil to suggest you can leave little white gaps like that. You know, same with that over here. And I'll continue with that in a minute. Uh, let's move down to the eyes now. Again, very expressive eyes, Martin Luther King. He has a little bit at the corner there, which goes up slightly more sharply than this bit, which slows down. 
and he has you know fairly distinct eyelashes. So I'll, we've got this line being fairly dark, and then you put some little ticks like that as they come round to the bottom. So you get that kind of shape, and then at the bottom, not such a heavy line, coming around to join like that, and then you put in the pupil, leave the highlight, and then just shade that in a lot of weight in your pencil, nice and dark, like that. Okay, I'll do exactly the same in that in a second, but let's move down to the nose. Remember those shapes that I put in? Well, this shape here, and it continues over here, and this uh, delineates, as I said, the shape of the, 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 the broad nose there. Now, the way I'm shading is I'm using kind of slightly a circular moment with the pen, uh, movement with the pencil, like that. It's up to you. You can, you can do diagonal lines if you like, make it more sketchy. I may, uh, in fact, I may add those uh, later on. But, um, you know, what you can do is put some weight on when you want it dark and then take the weight off when you want it lighter, like that. Okay? And of course, about shading under there. And then, of course, the nostrils themselves get a bit of weight on the shading. Okay? Now we move down to the moustache. And again, I'll just do one side um, at the moment, just to show you what to do. You do your lines following the line of the hairs, and this time the hairs are going down this way. So you follow this line right down like that. Okay, that one would be the same. And then we move on to the nice cupid's bow shape of the mouth, like that. Quite a definite shape coming in there, as I said. And what you see is the kind of shape of his tongue coming in, just a, you get a very dark shadow coming in there. And that follows, it's almost like a line following that bottom part of his top lip, see that? And the shade that is nice and dark in there. And in this part here, you just see his teeth, bottom row of teeth, just appearing. But you just indicate them very gently like that, okay? And then, as I said, the bottom lip goes down almost to a point, mark up again, to there. And then a very full bottom lip, and put some little shaded lines on that. Okay, so I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to start to, to shade in uh, with this pencil, 5 e pencil, and, and bring out the, the light and dark on the on the drawing. And basically what I'm doing with this is I'm just filling it in black. Again, putting quite a lot of weight on it. I'll bring that all the way around here, and then I'll work on that and that, just the same as I did there. Okay. Okay, as you can see, I've now done this part of his face and outlined uh, the shirt, tie, and jacket, and so on. Now I'm going to go back to the top, and I'm going to start to get a bit of modelling to the to the face. Okay, get a bit more three-dimensional. And in that case, what uh, you do is imagine the light's catching this part here. So right around the top of his head, as it curves away, will be shaded. So put a light line around here, coming down to there, and then down the side of his face, you'll get shading coming in down here modeling the shape of his face coming down. So this is slightly darker. Same with this part here coming up over his cheekbone, up towards his eye there, and this will be darker here as well. So again what you can do is just use your pencil like that, at length if you like, you know, holding this, the side of it, the side of the point, to get a softer impression. And then just, you know, bring up that shading right across the top. And when you want it darker, like here, just put a bit of weight on it. Like that, see that? And as it goes across the top, bring it over to here, and it gets a lot darker as it comes down here. A lot of weight on it, comes up like that. And Martin Luther King Jr. was an amazing person. And they won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. And um, one of his great sayings was, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. How true. And of course, he made his 
great uh, I have a dream speech at the Great March in Washington in 1963 okay a real loss to the world when he was assassinated cruelly assassinated okay so we bring that curve around here and uh, or um, you're getting the curve of the eye coming in there like that and then of course you get these little bits of shading underneath the eye usually about there around here another bit here all right and also bring the shading down here I'm going to do that bring that shading here and up here and I'll catch up with you when I've done it okay I've been shading down the side here now just a bit more you know follow the jawline coming up here you get a bit uh, bit of a darker line coming up side of his face there just to delineate that kind of shape coming up and a bit more carving under here a kind of line coming there you get that lightly pointed shape coming in there like that and then that line from the corner of his eye coming down over his cheekbone there joining this line down here as it gets darker okay Let's see, a bit more shading in there, a bit better. And the collar is a bit lower than that in there. Okay, right, now what I'm going to do now is just move up to the, the mouth, a bit of shading on the top lip, a bit darker, the outside edge. Take your weight off, the weight of the pencil has come to the centre because it's quite light, and tickle that back in over the corner here so it's fairly dark in there and then bring your bottom lip around and it extends out slightly it's slightly thicker than this side actually that's quite characteristic of Martin Luther King's face it's slightly wet apart there okay and then as I say just make that line a bit more obvious and then you can do a bit of shading at the bottom lip when your lines coming in like that, leave the whole central section light and a bit more shading up there like that. Okay, now we can move that down to the jacket and you can just, you know, shade this in very sketchily. Just, you know, fill that this area here and that area here and tie in very sketchily because we're getting a nice loose appearance to the drawing. Okay. Okay, just finishing off uh, the jacket, the shoulder here. Excellent. Okay, well, I think that'll do it. I hope you enjoyed that uh, tutorial. Drawing Martin Luther King Jr. And I hope you can join me again for another tutorial very soon. Okay, well, in the meantime, all the best and happy drawing.